Hello and welcome to Mastering the Basics of eQuest Energy Modeling. We're going to look at the Schematic Design Wizard HVAC options and talk through how the wizard is set up and some of the key input fields. I will try and do my best to speak about what each input can unlock and where we can go in terms of selecting different efficient equipment. Uh, but it is a wizard mode and it has a logic of its own. So with that, uh, I hope to give everyone some guidance on how I know to use the wizard mode uh, so that their e-questing can be a little faster. So here I'm already in the schematic wizard mode. Uh, and maybe I'll just hit finish just so it actually creates the base building. This is the building that eQuest just creates if you were to just click schematic mode and then hit OK. Uh, it makes an entire building for you. It makes lots of air conditioning systems, packaged single zones. So I'm going to go back. Let's go back into the wizard mode and check this out. So here we are, right? Project one. And we're going to really look at HVAC. So right off the bat, it's asking information about the size of the building and then the cooling and heating equipment. Based on what we pick here, there'll be more options later. So to start with, let's just assume we have a DX coil and we have a furnace. If I go through some of these architectural geometry inputs, eventually we'll get to the air conditioning system. So again, we see the same inputs. We have one system that has DX and a furnace. And so from the system type, we can pick package single zone. We can say a split system in each zone, which is similar in efficiency, but just with nomenclature difference. Package multi-zone with centralized furnace. There's a few options, you know, some, some legacy ones, some residential ones. We can return the air through directly ducted back directly to the unit through a duct that might heat it up or through a cavity of plenum. So we have DX and we have packaged single zones. If I was to change to be chilled water, you'll notice right away that my system type choice has changed. I now have a bunch of other options that I didn't have before. I also It also automatically changed the heating source. So the wizard mode is trying to be somewhat informative, helping people that may not know a ton about air conditioning understand the relationships between a decision such as, I know my building gets chilled water from somewhere, and what does that likely mean the system type I have? So by default, it says, you probably have a standard variable air volume system where hot water is being sent around to each VAV reheat coil. And you may not, you could pick a different system. For instance, you could pick four pipe fan coil system. Um, but either way, so that chilled water input can do a lot of things. Evaporatively cooled assumes you have a system type where it's directly evaporating water and indirectly evaporating water. So let's stick with DX for a minute and we're actually going to look at how the same thing can be happen when you change the heating source. If you say you have DX, an air cooled DX package system, but you have hot water and a boiler, that will also change the type of system that used to be a standard furnace and a split DX with furnace. Now if I say I have hot water, it says, well, most likely then you have a variable air volume system where air conditioning is packaged on the roof in a box and then hot water is sent through pipes again to reheat coils. This is probably the most common air conditioning system in most buildings, two to four stories um, that have been built since the 70s. So that's some of the system choice selections and the relationships. I'm gonna run through DX and then let's come back and look at chilled water because we get more options with chilled water than we do with DX. And so here we go, we have thermostatic set points. You can put in when it's occupied, what's the temperature in the space, when it's unoccupied, how hot does it get? And same thing on the heating. This is the thermostat set point. This is the design temperature. If we know some amount of airflow that is being designed, maybe we're designing for 0.75 CFM a square foot. Uh, most VAV boxes by code have to turn down to 20%. You can get ones that go down to 10. Uh, now this is a, an attempt to talk about the efficiency of cooling. It'll pick how big the unit will be. If you have an idea of how big it will be, it will try and pick an efficiency based on that knowledge. We're just gonna pick our own efficiency. 
based on EER, and you can look up, this is the definition of an efficiency rating for an air conditioning system. Here are the fans. You can pick a static pressure for fans. Most code base fans are four and a half inches of static. You can get a good system down to one or two inches if you oversize uh, duct work and things. But I would stick with three inches by, by default if you really don't know anything, maybe four. This is when the fan runs. So right now it's running Monday through Friday. Uh, it's not running Saturday and Sunday. Or, and it is also running on the cooling and heating degree days. We'll talk about degree days and heating, or not degree days, these are design days, very, very critical. We have no baseboards, we have hot water reheat. The economizer, so the ability to bring in fresh air when it's nice outside, we're gonna pick dry bulb temperature with a higher limit of 75 to match our thermostat. Outside air reset. Oh, we're actually going to change this to be warmest, which means this is the common way to control air conditioning systems. It allows the supplier, when it's cooling, to go up to 60 degrees if all the rooms are satisfied. Very common. We have a hot water pump. And here we might know it's variable speed. A lot of pumps are variable speed today, even if you don't quite need it to be. We're going to say this is at 60 feet ahead. And so the nice thing here is you don't have to put all these things in, um, but you can if you know them. And so eQuest just runs anyways, even if you don't know all these inputs. And that's kind of the beauty of it. If you, if you get some bit of information on how efficient the boiler is, or let's say they're trying to make it a condensing boiler, and you look up that that's about 80 to 90% efficient, you know, you could put in 88%. Hot water supply, you could do different controls. And then this is for the actual hot water we drink, the domestic hot water. So it's saying there's another boiler that's 80% efficient and it makes hot water and it has a storage tank. So maybe we have instantaneous that'll take this down. That'll change some efficiency factors. And that's it. So actually, oops, so I hit finish and now it's gonna apply those changes. Now you see package variable or volume. If you were to look at the component tree, I now have two systems, one per floor. So lastly, seven minutes here, on air conditioning in wizard mode, let's go back in. We're gonna look at this impact on going all the way to a chilled water system. So DX, pretty common for mid-sized buildings. If we were to go to chilled water, the reason I'm selecting this is now we'll have more options. And we have more options for the selections of the chiller and the cooling tower system. So I'm going through these. We already looked at some of these. Now here we have the chilled water system. So we can see this is, uh, we're gonna do variable speed flow. The pump will be variable speed. The chiller itself, we can pick an air-cooled chiller or a water-cooled chiller. We can pick the efficiency. I'm trying to buy a high efficiency chiller here. The cooling tower, this tab was created because we selected water cooled. If I did packaged air cooled, that tab is gone. So if you notice we're at page 31, and now we're at 33. If I change to be water cooled, it adds in 32. So the wizard is your friend. It's trying to figure out the pieces of equipment you will need to fill in the least amount of inputs to get your overview that this is the right design. We have an open tower. I'm gonna to say it's a variable speed tower. Centrifugal fan, high efficiency, and that's, we're, we're set. You know, all these set points in here, uh, the boiler and everything else. So I'm gonna hit finish. It's gonna recreate the model. Every time I hit finish, it's fully recreating this model from scratch. So now again, we see, now it says variable air volume. We actually see it has a water coil instead of that DX looking coil. Now, if you go to the water side tab, not that we're going to change things, but now you can actually start to look at the equipment it made. So it made a chilled water loop, put a pump on that loop, made a chiller, it tied that chiller to another water loop that has a cooling tower on it. And that cooling tower loop has a pump. It made a boiler, and that boiler has a pump, pumps hot water. It made a domestic hot water boiler as well. This is our instantaneous one that's tied to the amount of water we need to drink and take showers, things like that. So that's our model. Uh, it's pretty nifty.
and in the next tutorial we'll look at some of the inputs you can make in the uh, other wizard, the design development wizard. Thanks.